Hey everybody, it's Mara, and this is your Matter Hackers Minute. We're here with Drew Offhammer, who's doing amazing things with 3D printing. And um, I get so excited when they are local and can come and check us out at Matter Hackers HQ. Your story is new to me, but it's so awesome. Tell us what you are doing with 3D printing. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've been doing a million things, but one of the things uh, I've been having fun with lately is uh, helping a friend of mine who's a physical therapist. I've been helping him develop and uh, test out some new tools that he uses for his physical therapy practice. Awesome. And how, how was he doing his uh, physical therapy before? Yeah, before, uh, you know, he had a lot of ideas about how he wanted to progress his physical therapy practice and his techniques, but he didn't have a way of kind of bringing those into reality. And so he was using parts from hardware stores and other things like that to put together tools that he could try to use uh, for his techniques. Um, and when I met him, I was like, hey, I think I could help you out by designing some of these tools for you and, and kind of taking some of those things that are in your mind and your brain and getting them into reality. And so I've been helping him create his new designs for different tools and instruments for his practice. And uh, yeah, he's been using those to kind of advance his uh, field in physical therapy That's and awesome. help people with chronic pain and things like that. So what kinds of things have you brought here today? That's yeah, so I brought stuff. a couple examples of, of tools that I brought. Um, I so these are some of the kind these of 3D print. Yeah, I know. These are some of the tools that he uses for physical therapy. Um, but these are actually kind of some of the master uh, tools that I've printed. And so these were all 3D printed, um, but then post-processed -pro post and finished uh, to be you know, glassy smooth for mold making. Mm -hmm. And so we've been using, um, I've been doing silicone mold making uh, to to kind of be an inter intermediary wow. step between injection molding and 3D printing. Um, you know, he's iterating his design so quickly that it wouldn't be cost effective to invest in injection molding dyes or tooling. And so um, being able to use 3D printing and, you know, silicone molding to make small quantities of his tools has been really helpful for him, um, you know, before jumping into that big investment of injection molding. Yeah, so this way he can actually use a desktop 3D printer mm -hmm. to make the part or make a prototype of mm -hmm. the part and then do the post processing, make the mold so that it's a lot cheaper to make custom pieces. Yeah. Does he make custom pieces? Well, do you make the pieces for him? You make custom pieces for each um, patient, like to their size, or how does Not that work? Not for each patient, but really for different techniques that he does. Okay. He has about, um, you know, two main, two kind of different type, types of techniques. So he has you, so he has an idea for a design for mm -hmm. something that's going to help his. Patients, yeah. and then you design it, print it on a desktop 3D printer using what what yeah. material was used? Was this uh, I usually, I've been using PLA for these um, kind oh, of wow. mas masters for for making the silicone molds. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times for before this step, he'll try the tool out for a while in the 3D printed version. So I'll 3D print it usually in ABS or PETG. So it's a little stronger. Yes, yeah, so it's a little yeah. more a little stronger, a little more durable. Um, and so he'll try it out for a while, and if the design works well, then we'll move to making a silicone mold and casting uh, some of the tools okay. for kind of low volume production. Yeah. Um, so before you make the silicone mold, though, you have to do some post processing to make yeah. it so um, shiny and smooth. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll basically print it out, sand it, lots of sanding. Sand it, sand it, um, sand it. And then I use XTC 3D, which you guys yeah, have, yeah. Um, to give it a couple coats of this kind of epoxy coating that really helps smooth it out. I'll do a few sanding uh, sanding steps between those coats. Then after that, I'll even give it a couple coats of like a clear lacquer spray paint, just kind of a clear coat. And then I'll sand it again with 1,000 grit sandpaper and mm -hmm. then even buff it to get it just really glassy smooth before um, making the silicone mold. So the tools turn out pretty clear and nice yeah. and shiny. I mean, this is amazing. This is, how, how much different is this from something you would get from injection molding? Yeah, it's pretty similar. Um, it's, it's, you know, resin it's casting. Really um, so it's a little different, but uh, it's a great step kind of between 3D printing and injection molding. Yeah, and because you worked so hard to get the part so smooth in the first place, there's no lines on here. I mean, it really is incredible. Yeah, um, and so he can do kind of these short runs to kind of test out his tools uh, before 
making that step to injection molding. So how does some of these work? Like how do they actually, how are they used in his office? Yeah, so Dr. Jacobs has kind of developed two different types of techniques for uh, releasing fascia and for also uh, getting rid of scar tissue that builds up from injuries. And so these tools okay. he'll use uh, kind of along the skin. They're kind of oh. almost like massage tools and they'll break up scar tissue under the surface of the skin that oh, causes so some chronic pain. Yeah. And then, because sometimes cause it's funny because I, I use a foam roller. Mm -hmm, um, yep. So I was thinking when I saw this, I'm like, oh, we probably does like a custom, like a roller. Yeah, no, yeah, it's actually yeah, this part. Yep, yep. That's really kinda cool. Kind of held like a hammer. And yep. then these tools he uses to um, kind of stretch out uh, fascia under your skin. And so these tools will kind of grip the skin and allow that fascia to be released oh. and stretched out uh, to kind of relieve tension and pain caused by that tight fascia. Okay, so this is really the grip, and mm -hmm. this is this yeah. is why you need this kind of textured yep, part here. Yeah, kind of rubber part on the bottom. Got it. Oh, yeah. it feels kind of nice. Yeah. I like it. Um, very cool. Yeah, I can see how, um, so these, I mean, if something like this was even available in the marketplace, they would probably be pretty expensive because they're very specific. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, he's been doing, he teaches classes um, and licenses practitioners for how to use his techniques and these tools. Okay. So how much do you, would you say um, a part like this, for example, would cost if you were to go and get it injection molded versus this process of maybe you put a little more time into yeah. it, but you get a lot Yeah, cheaper. I know. He's told me, he's looked into injection molding and he's told me that, um, you know, the cost for the tooling for even just uh, two of these tools kind of in one die could be up to $6,000 for just that tooling. Wow. And after that, the parts are a lot cheaper, but he has five different kind of tools that he's patented and to get... Uh, injection molding, tooling done for all of those would be a pretty costly investment at this stage of his practice. And yeah. especially as he's kind of continually changing and iterating these designs to kind of perfect it, it wouldn't be worth it at this point for him to do that. Yeah. yeah. What kind of machine are you using? Uh, right now I'm using a custom built, kind of a home built uh, Taz 3, 4 okay. uh, prototype, yeah. uh, uh, kind of combination. Yeah. Yeah. So so Taz and Stein uh -huh, sort of exactly. thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And yeah. um, you brought some, uh, I want to hear a little bit more about your adventures in 3D printing and how yeah. you got here. How did you get started with 3D printers? Yeah, uh, around 2009, I was just kind of experimenting with Arduinos and robotics a little bit and stumbled across the RepRap project online and kind of just quickly got sucked into that and learning mm -hmm. everything I could about, you know, 3D printers and how I could make one myself. And so actually, uh, you know, over the course of a few months, was able to cobble one together with just parts I had laying around the house. Um, I, I brought an example of uh, kind of this home homemade extruder that oh was my on goodness. my first 3D printer made with wow. junk from inkjet printers and laser printers, you know, motors and gears and I, these these bearings, I, I think I actually pulled them out of my skateboard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it was all handmade. So I basically made a printer out of junk that I then used to print all the parts for my subsequent printers. Okay. Um, and so, so now I've kind of made four different 3D printers currently using that Taz 3, 4 mm -hmm. hybrid. Three and a half. Yeah, exactly. So, and then these were? Yeah, these are some of the my very first 3D prints with this uh, extruder and my okay. very first homemade 3D printer. I just keep them for posterity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think we all keep our, me, remind our very me first prints. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, yep. Usually I'm wearing my little cat ring, but yeah. I, didn't, I didn't wear it today. Um, so what's next for you? With 3D printing. Yeah, I just love um, I love fixing things and making things, and so that's one of the things that I, I mostly love to do with it. Uh, around the house, just if, when things break, I love creating a replacement part, you know, for something that I usually couldn't get a replacement part for. Mm -hmm. um, now you do some interesting things at home with 3D printers as well. I heard rumor about some like a bow and arrow thing. Yeah, or I have a, I have a six-year-old son, things? and okay. he's always dreaming up crazy ideas, and um, we were making some, you know, bow and arrow for him, and and uh, you know, one day we thought about making like a custom grip for a little bow that he was making. So we, you know, this was kind of one of the first projects I had him kind of do it with me. And so we got on the CAD software and modeled it up and took measurements of his hand and tried to make a nice little grip for his bow. Yeah. Uh, and then we were able to print it out and he was able to use it, you know, just a few hours later. And so it was pretty cool to get him involved. And I think on a weekly basis now, he's like, yeah, can we 3D print this? Can we 3D print that? It's a family affair, 3D yeah. printing. I almost don't print for myself much anymore because, you know, there's only so many little trinkets and things like that you can print out before you kind of get bored of that. Mm -hmm. But like 
printing out functional things for other people to help other people is one of the things I love doing the most. Yeah, um, and doing what you're doing with your son and encouraging mm -hmm. him to design his own yeah. things as opposed to just go on Thingiverse and download another Yoda head. Totally. So for those of us who are um, maybe new to 3D printing, um, thinking about doing uh, a project like this, making a custom mm -hmm. uh, mold, what's the one thing that you learned that you wish you knew when you first started? Yeah. I'm sure uh, there's many. That it's addicting, that you just get, <laughs> you get sucked into it. Once you learn that you can make anything that you can dream up, yeah, uh, yeah it, the options and possibilities are endless. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, yeah, just jump in. It, just get started somewhere, buy a cheap 3D printer and start trying it out. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, dream project? Yeah. Do you have a dream project? Oh, dream project. Uh, oh gosh. I know I have I mine. Know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'd have to think for a minute. Okay. I want, I, I sing in bands yeah. and I want a custom um, microphone case nice. um, that's in the uh, shape of a uh, Zima bottle because nice. I sing in a 90s yeah. band. That's so awesome. like if I was singing into a Zima bottle, yeah. that'd be awesome. Yeah. I'm just cool. saying, yeah. it's a dream. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much um, for coming to see us. I'm super excited about your work. I hope everybody learned something. I know I did. Um, uh, thanks for having me. You're welcome. We hope to see you again soon. Thanks a lot. And uh, I'm Mara, and uh, this is Drew, and this has been your Matter Hackers Minute. Go be awesome! Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.